produced. You know, with all the great figures in history, whether that's they're Muslim or, or not, they, they have always found supporters and also critiques. Um, supporters have really promoted their ideas, sometimes quite fervently, and the critiques felt that they had to respond to their ideas, like they just could not ignore these great figures and their writings and influence. And Ibn Rushd is one of those. I think all the figures that we have covered fall into that category. They have their supporters, they have their critics. Uh, having critics doesn't mean they were wrong or they did really bad things or they wrote uh, uh, or they misled the ummah. Uh, it's just that they thought differently on, sharp, or on issues. Uh, Imam Ghazali, which we have covered also, he says that if anyone, if there's a person who claims to be a scholar and all they do is just transmit the views of other people and they do not produce their own original contribution, stay away from them. Because they don't, they're just carriers of someone else's views, they don't have views themselves. So therefore, they should not be classified as scholars. I mean, you know, when you're studying in uh, university or in uh, ISRA, uh, we are encouraged to, uh, in, we encourage you to quote uh, the, the opinions of other scholars. But at the end, you have to form it all together, synthesize it, and produce your own original critical comments. So in that sense, we all need to come to a conclusion and, and, and these great figures have strong opinions, and they forcefully argued their cases, and Ibn Rushd is one of those. Um.